So welcome to season number four, Can We Talk? I'm Derek, my wife Sonia. Hey! And we're going to do some things differently this year. We're going to be coming outside the box. We're going to be doing no ring lights, no sitting in front of the camera. We may be here in the bathroom in another state. We may be at home in our living room. We may be in the bedroom. We may be in the park. We may be outside somewhere. But we're going to be talking about relationships because we feel like sitting in front of the camera, you're not really giving the true essence of how to have healthy relationships. A shower in the hotel room? You didn't say that one. Shower? I, I did say shower. Oh, the shower in the hotel room, y'all, in Kentucky. In Kentucky. <laughs> so these are some of the things that you'll see this season. Um, and we just want you to really get an understanding about relationships from our perspective. And the best way to give it to you from our perspective is from our perspective. So what are we talking about this episode, right? Well, this is a perfect example. We're talking about how to value the person over the process. And this process right here, I have to value Derek because this is my little shower quiet meditation time. So he just interrupted the process. But because I value him and I desire to teach others through this vlog, I'm valuing him. I'm valuing him. Not the process. What? So, so no. So we're talking about valuing the person and not the process. This is a good example. Would you not agree? Yes. So welcome to season number four, episode number one. I call this the COVID season. Because I'm washing off the COVID. What a good way to start. Can we talk season number four, episode number one? You know, 25 years of marriage, let me tell you a little story. Flying has always been our vein of our existence in our marriage. I like to get to the airport. And some of you who know us know the story. I like to get to the airport two hours before. Not like when I say get to the airport, I'm talking about waiting in the waiting area. Waiting. Not two hours getting there. My wife, on the other hand, she doesn't mind running through the gates, running through the terminal. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, I thank God that we are on time. Now, we're not really two hours. We're about an hour and 30 minutes before the flight boards, but it's okay. The thing about marriage is we have to adapt and adjust. It's sometimes it's hard. So, um, so here we are. Say hey, baby. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, we will. I can't hear what you were saying. I was just saying how we have our differences in flying. Oh. And over the years, we've adjusted. Oh, yes. I've learned, I've learned more patience. And you've learned. I've learned more patience too. Have you learned the importance of getting here earlier? How you doing? We're doing good time, aren't we? We're doing good time. So, yeah, so tell me what you learned. Time. What did you learn? What did I learn? I learned that to have a good trip, I might as well just get my butt up and be at the airport Five hours before it's time to leave. It's not really five hours. I know. What's that? What's good. So you value. You value. I value you. It's value. not the process. That's that's some word right there, man. Say that again. I value you, not the process. So so that's so deep because early in our marriage, she wanted to value the process more than she valued me. Mm. That's deep right there. That's deep. We just had a moment right there. She wanted to value the process, so she valued why we got a rush. Ain't nobody going nowhere. I worked too hard for my D money to be 
rushing all day long. I rushed every day, that's so many years ago. But she didn't value me. So now she values me, but that doesn't mean that. process. So here we are. That's 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 a takeaway right there, honey. What? I said that's a takeaway right there. That is a takeaway. We can stop vlogging. So the takeaway is that you, at some point you gotta get you gotta get to the point where you're gonna value your spouse. You're not negating the process valuing your spouse. Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia, welcome back to season four. We have missed you and we are so glad to be back after eight months of COVID. Eight months of COVID and eight months of other stuff too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So as you can tell, we're trying a new format. We're doing a new format, as you can tell, and we're going to be away from the ring light, away from the format of just sitting in front of the camera. And this is just unedited. Unedited. We are actually in Louisville, Kentucky in a hotel room after attending a dear friend's daughter's wedding. And it was a wonderful wedding weekend. And we just thought, why not just start today? Mm -hmm. So as you looked at the video, the, the um, as you looked at the conversation we had going to the airport, we're talking mm -hmm. about values. We're talking about how to value the person as opposed to valuing the process. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about value and purpose. The person. Well, you know, the valuing of the person, Derek and I discovered that we had to be able to value the person that we are married to before we can get to the point of the process. So years ago, I did not value the process of getting to the airport early, as you saw as we were walking to the airport earlier. But when we continued talking in the airplane and throughout the weekend, what I shared with Derek was that I learned how to value him as a husband when he started to value himself as a husband when he started to learn and seek out what it meant to be a husband of God. And when I saw him shift, that's when I realized it was important for me to appreciate the process that he was doing um, and going through to become the husband he needed to become. Now, what we also discovered was which comes first, the chicken or the, the egg? Should I have waited or was there something inside of me that needed to be uh, explored as the wife and in our journey Derek says that it was when I changed and started to become more intentional about being a wife that he was safe to explore what it was like for him to be a husband to me yeah because I was, I was going to say it sounded like when Sonia was talking that I had to do all this changing right that I had to do all these things in order for Sonia to value me but you know, Sonia had to do some some changes on her own, and mm -hmm. and that's when I had to make my adjustments and realize that okay, I can value her. So it's one of those things where a husband and wife. If I value my wife, then is she going to value me? Or if Sonia values me, am I going to value her? So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And I explained to Sonia that it wasn't until she made movement for me to see the change in me does that make sense uh -huh. when you made movement it allowed me to see me because it felt safe uh -huh. for me to be me so what movement meant ladies wives if you're watching this you might have heard me say this in some other um videos i can't remember it's been so long but i went through a 365 day season of trying to be the wife that God called me to be. And what that meant was I had to start studying what was the difference between a man and a woman. And I said, God was intentional when he made the man. He made a man after his own image and he formed him out of the ground and he breathed breath into him and he became a living being. Then he saw the man functioning and naming the animals and taking dominion. And he said, no, he needs a suitable partner. Then he went in the man's rib and made 
someone similar but not like the man. And I said, why did God make us similar but not the same? He put more oxytocin hormones in us, more um, estrogen hormones in us. He gave us with the ability to have the verbal centers and the brain neurons crossing over, whereas men's, their verbal centers are linear, ours cross over. And I'm like, why did he do that? What was so, di why did he make us so different? So when I started studying the differences in the woman, I said, this was designed to actually help our husbands. We have the emotional capacity where they when they fizz out emotionally, we're just getting started emotionally. When we're able to socially verbalize how we feel and emote, men are able to because of how they were socialized. When we're able to talk about four different things at the same time, homework, bills, parents, schedules, a relationship all at the same time we could have that conversation men aren't able to do that they have to focus on one thing and I said well why is that the, the case why did he do that so I started spending time being intentional in the positive attributes that God made the woman in and that's what doing the work that Derek is talking about meant that process that I had to go through and it took me 365 days to figure out that God intended for me to use my good, my, my gifts for good and not evil. <laughs> and there was a time where I was using them for evil. There was a time where I was calling Derek um, inadequate because he couldn't verbally speak the language that I was speaking or process four different pieces of information at the same time. And then I, was, I realized that God made man to be the husband, to work to be focused, to be intentional, to be driven. He has more muscle mass than I do. He has more red blood cells than I do. He's stronger than I am. He wasn't made to do all that emotional stuff. He can, he can learn it. But the point was that I was supposed to be a help to him so that he could do his job as a husband. And because it didn't look the way that I wanted it to look, I was um, criticizing him which was preventing him from feeling safe to actually explore what being a husband looked like. So I shut up and I went into my 365 days and I studied myself and I studied God's uh, handiwork of the woman. And I think what happens is we get married and we don't really understand why there is a distinct difference between the woman and the man so that we could actually fulfill those roles. Why are we the ones that actually give life why are we the ones that bear the children? Why are they the ones that plant the seed? There's a whole spiritual component to the seed and receiving the seed and then birthing a child. But I'm digressing. We'll do that in another yeah, session. Yeah, um, she went deep. <laughs> she, she, she went deep. I got excited. Place. You know, um, I mean, I. <laughs> you went to a place where you just kind of opened up a whole nother can of information uh, but it was good information because everything that Sonia said I'll just say in my own words she had an unrealistic expectation of me uh -huh. so that's pretty uh -huh. much what she was saying uh -huh. and until she I wanted him to be like me she want that and right do there things like me she wanted me to be and that think like me she, she's still talking uh -huh. She wanted me to be that, uh -huh. and I'm Derek, and I couldn't be that because I didn't know who, I didn't value myself. So because I didn't value myself at that time, it was intimidating, it was frustrating. I didn't know my role as a husband, as God, as Sonya says, God intended it for me to be. As he blew the breath in me, I still wasn't walking in the role of man. Uh -huh. And so, being married in our early years of being married, Sonia, I always give this analogy that Sonia was on this train and she's at the end of the train at the caboose and the train is going down the track a hundred miles an hour and I'm running on the track behind the caboose and she's saying, hurry up, get on, get on, get on. I'm like, slow the train down <laughs> because we're different. Our genders are different. Our brains are different. We're different values and morals and beliefs. And so going back to the point of valuing the person more than valuing the process, meaning that 
Sony had to start to value me for who I was. So, so traveling and uh, on the air, you know, traveling and getting on the airplane and, and getting there on time, that was my principle. Get there two hours before. I have to get there early. Anything can happen within the time that we leave until the time that we get there. And so that was the principle that I stood on. And Sonia's was different. Sonia was like, well, I work too hard. I'm tired of rushing. I do everything for everybody else. You know, I need to get there at the time. We'll make it. We're not going to be late. Mm -hmm. And so those two worlds clashed. And so we had to get to the place where I had to value the fact that, yeah, what's going to happen? What's the worst that can happen? And the worst has never happened for us in 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for Sonia, what's the worst that can happen for us to get there? So... So Sonia started to value me. And so as you saw on the clip earlier, it, it was an eye opening for me at that moment. And that was real time because she said, I value you more than I value this process. This is my process. This is who I am, but I'm valuing you more than the process. So how can you value your spouse more than whatever the process is? How can you value her? How can she value you? And it requires looking at the barriers, looking at who you are. Looking, looking at, at the at preferences. Uh, Derek really, really doesn't like to, to fly. Um, he does it because he has to. He likes to travel, but he doesn't like the process to getting to the place. I love to fly. It's the time that I have sanity, uh, serenity. Um, I can have, I'm left to my own thoughts. There's not a whole lot of interaction. I'm a therapist by profession, so I'm talking to people all day long. When I get on the airplane, I don't have to talk to nobody. I actually can sleep, I can read, I can catch up on my shows. I absolutely love flying. So what we realized was the Derek, that Derek doesn't like to fly had a lot to do with just being in control of other things, getting to the airport, being in control of that process. So that when he gets to the gate and he can sit down and, 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 and relax and decompress, um, it decreases his anxiety. I'm up, I'm on 10. I can, you know, I can get there late or early. It doesn't matter to me because I'm just excited about the fact that we're getting on a plane. And what I realized was in marriage, you have to look at the greater good for the person um, who has their insecurities or their anxieties about certain things. I have anxieties about bugs and rats and mice and all that kind of stuff. Derek doesn't. So of course, if I say, I saw a roach, he's for the greater good, he's gonna get up out of sleep sacrifice the sleep, find the roach and kill the roach for me or whatever the bug is for me. Um, and so we I realized that because I value him and his you know lack of having control over the flying experience, the least I could do is segue and give in to the process so that at least it's more comfortable for him by the time we get to the airport. And that's just an example of studying the, per the person and their core and their preferences, their likes and their dislikes. Because that's actually what made me get my butt up early to get to the airport. It was not that I agreed with the process, but I valued that he doesn't like to fly and he well, has to have this process to feel better about it. I had an epiphany just now. What's Here's that? the reason why I have to get there two hours before. Okay. Because I'm responsible for whatever happens in between. Uh -huh. See, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for if a flat tire happens. I'm responsible for if a car accident happens. Uh -huh. I'm responsible for if something happens that's going to be off sync the man, the husband has to respond to those things. Mm -hmm. And so I put a lot of pressure on myself. So if those things happen, you know, I have to get out and change the tire. You know, I have to see if something happened to someone who hit our vehicle. I have to, because that's my, now you mm -hmm. can, mm -hmm. but because- But you're thinking of all the things that could happen between the house and the airport. Right, and, and I'm responsible for it. But is there any validity to also just the fear, not the fear, but the 
the realization that you don't have any control I think so, once yeah. you get to I the think airport. that's a piece I think there's there's a lot of different moving parts for me as a man that are unspoken uh -huh. and I think that's the, the fear of, of not having control and the anxiety of missing a plane uh -huh. and how I grew up uh -huh. you know in the military and the in law enforcement but the epiphany I had in addition to all that is that I'm so responsible I'm not that guy who's going to sit and say, okay, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Uh -huh. You know, so, so... So that buffer of time gives you some comfort right. in case there is an incident. Right. And I'm telling you this because I just want you to add to how you value me uh -huh. is adding that component of valuing me and my responsibility. But it makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. Right. Um, and I think whether it made sense or not, I was still going to value you yeah, now that I understand... But that even helps me value him even right. more. And that's why I brought that up because a lot of couples don't have these kind of conversations, like going deeper to, right. okay, what is it about me that this person needs to know so they can value me? Right. And I just gave Sonia additional, and it's not that she needed that information because she was valuing me, valuing me anyway with all the other factors, but I just gave her more information that, look, this is another reason why I, I'm on it two hours before. So, mm -hmm. so hopefully you got some, some information in regards to valuing your spouse and how to value your spouse. And it, it, we'll close with this. If you don't value yourself, you can't value your spouse. Mm -hmm. If you have no value about yourself, then you, you don't have enough, the capacity to value the other person. And the danger is that a lot of people get married thinking that's going to help them find their value. Right. And if you get married expecting the other person to give you your value, you're going to sabotage the marriage. Right. It's not going to work. You've got to find your value. You've got to uh, uh, find your worth. You've got to see the part that you're going to contribute to the marriage with, as opposed to expecting someone to come better you and enhance your life. Now, I will say that marriage does better us. But you don't go in with the intention of the other person doing that. The process actually betters us, not the person. Now, that's a caveat. Say it again. The process of marriage helps us value the other person. Yet, we have to value the other person over the process. I think they need to, to stop the video, uh -huh. and rewind it, that's, and hear you say it again. That's so deep, though. Yeah. The process of marriage helps you value the person but valuing the person is its own so, entity so maybe next next vlog we can talk about the process of marriage uh -huh. because that's like how okay so how do i get that but not value the process of marriage because there is a process of right marriage. and that's the process of the two becoming one right and having to shed those selfish things about yourself having to shed doing things your way and expecting the person to do things your way, right. which is selfishness. It's selfishness isn't about what you want. It's about wanting the other person to do what you want. Mm. That's what selfishness is. Not just about what you want, but wanting the other person to do what you want. And so marriage is about learning how to value the person so that you don't become selfish, but yet at the same time becoming one. That's a lot. That's a lot to digest. That's um, a lot. And people get married yeah. just for companionship. They think, oh, they're, this is going to make my life better. You have absolutely no idea what work you have to put in to have a better life once you get married. And a lot, of, and that's why people are disillusioned and they get divorced. Because they get, they get married and they realize, I got to do some changing. I don't want that. And I don't like that person. And they won't change. And I don't, I don't want to change. And so they get stuck. And they're at an impasse. And they divorce as opposed to letting the marriage process change you. It's going to change you. If you are the same person 10, 15 years after you got married, I can't imagine that you have a healthy marriage if you're the same person. Unless you got married as a saint. And ain't none of us saints. <laughs> We're all sinners. So let's take a pen. Uh -huh. Let's take a bit of that. Okay. And come back to that maybe in part two because that was a good stuff. That was a, that's a good part two, the process of marriage. Yeah. So I have 12 o'clock and we have a 320 flight, which means <laughs> that we have exactly an hour to get to the airport so I can feel comfortable. Okay. And the airport's 40 minutes away. It's so 40 minutes go. away. So let's go. 
So subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Thank you for watching and staying with us. We missed you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, subscribe and share it. And we just look forward to having these kind of discussions impromptu. These mm -hmm. kind of vlogs impromptu. Okay, and they're gonna be real impromptu. So, so you be get ready for some some unusual content. Because as we talk, we just gonna record. Pack it up. All right, we gotta get out this hotel. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to get out of Louisville. They, they, I like Louisville, but the hotel, they got to work on it. This one here, they, <laughs> yeah, they put a comment All right, in the comments. So, box. value your spouse versus the process. And now that you know what, what you're going to do, do with, with it, it was so good to see you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and put that bell on there so that you can get our notifications. And we will see you next time. Peace.